attack. The moment I heard this ransomware attack, the first thing that struck my mind was this. This is not the first time, and of course, this will not be the last time too. We have heard of these attacks for several decades. I was just wondering when was the first instance that these type of attacks ever happened. I was too surprised to know that, that the first attack happened in the year 1988. Yes, you heard it right. It is 1988. Morris worm was the first internet worm that was attacked over the internet. Since then, it has gone endless and it has grew up to a vast extent. There is not a surprising data that almost was unbelievable. However, it sounds to be true. More than 4,000 ransomware attacks are happening every single day. And this report has been taken since January 2016. Here is the recent most attack that has shaken the world by surprise. WannaCrypt ransomware attack. So who is the target? Computers running on Windows operating system and which are not up to date are the primary target. Especially computers running on Windows XP, Vista, Server 2003, 2008, Windows 8 are most targeted. So by now you should be wondering, what about a computer running on Windows 7 or Windows 10 or Windows 8.1? Are we not vulnerable? This question is definitely to be answered. Of course, any computer immaterial of your operating system's version, if you're not up to date, all the computers are vulnerable. To make it more precise, even if you're running Windows 10, however, your computer misses certain critical security updates, you are highly vulnerable. So why are they the victim? Microsoft has officially announced end of support for certain operating systems. So Microsoft never released updates or patches for those operating systems. However, after this incident of WannaCry ransom attack, Microsoft came up with certain updates and they released it on the third of, it was the third month of this year, that is the March the 12th this year. However, many enterprises never took it seriously. This was the primary reason the significance of missing these security updates were the primary target, and that is why they became the victim. So there are two key takeaways from this situation. Number one, you should ensure that you upgrade yourself to the latest operating system all the time, be it a latest version or update your patches to the most that you can. So what happens to a computer which is affected by WannaCrypt? WannaCrypt ransomware encrypts all your data. When I say all your data, yes, it could be in form of your documents, be it your videos, audio files, photographs, whatnot, even your system related files, your OS related files are encrypted. So all that the user can view is just what is shared over here for you on the screen. The user is demanded, in fact, if you are a user, you'll have to pay a ransom to decrypt your data. So paying a ransom, is, that gives you no guarantee that your data is retrieved back. And the best part here is, I'm not sure, I'm sorry to say this, the best or the worst part here is, they demand you the ransom in source of Bitcoin. When you say Bitcoin, this is digital currency, and these transactions never run through a centralized bank. So this is exactly where they take advantage of. So does it stop with a computer which is being affected? No, it doesn't. So once a computer is affected, it, it leads to eternal blue attack. When I say eternal blue attack, this ransomware attacks the SMB. SMB here refers to the server message blocks which targets the ports which are vulnerable and it hunts for the next eligible victim. So these are the ports which are considered to be vulnerable and which are the speech ports which the ransomware targets. Ports TCP 139, 445 and UDP 
138 are the most targeted ports. So what do we do now? How do we prevent this? There are two things that need to be addressed at this part. When I say prevention, the first thing that we'll have to do is to ensure that if by any chance this ransomware has attacked one of your computer, we wanted to ensure that this ransomware doesn't spread across your network. So the first thing that we would recommend you to do is to block the vulnerable ports. And the next thing that you'll have to do is to deploy the missing patches to the appropriate computers. So how do we do that? I'll explain it to you. When I say blocking the ports, it actually works in different ways for Windows XP and computers running Windows Vista and later versions. So using Desktop Central, you'll be able to block the ports as well as deploy the patches. Let me give you a quick demonstration using the product, which can give you a better understanding on how this is achieved. So this is Desktop Central's web console. Existing customers of Desktop Central should be very familiar with this. However, I still have a lot of participants who are not familiar with this console. So let me give you a quick overview. Desktop Central is an integrated desktop and mobile device management software which takes care of all your system administrative needs starting from patching computers, deploying software, troubleshooting computers remotely, IT asset management, mobile device management, and a lot more. So we are going to click on configurations. It's the second tab, configurations. OK, so Desktop Central offers you wide range of configurations which can be used to customize your requirement. And you'll have to choose script repository, which is at the bottom of the page. Here it is, script repository. I'm going to choose that. So what is a script repository? Desktop Central offers you a lot of scripts which are ready-made available in form of templates. Repository and a view for templates. I'm going to click on templates. Once you click on templates, towards the right extreme, you have an option which allows you to synchronize, to fetch the latest scripts. So I'm going to synchronize the script templates with Desktop Central. In other simple terms, my server, which is running in my particular network, have the list of templates which are released by Desktop Central, and Desktop Central frequently keeps updating their templates. Every time I go ahead and click on this particular icon, it retrieves, it pulls all the latest templates from Desktop Central's server. So I'm just going to click it, and here I could see the template is, I mean, all the data, the latest templates are synchronized. And the first template that I see here is exclusively Mint. This is a custom script in form of a template. This is exclusively designed to disable SMB port V1. OK? So I'm going to choose View It in Repository under Actions. And here I find the script under Script Repository. I'm going to scroll down towards the right. Again, click on Actions. And here is my feasibility where I can go ahead and deploy this particular script to computers. Do remember, you have the feasibility to deploy the script to users as well as computers. We are going to opt out for computers, which is the need of the R. So I'm going to click on this. So here it is. A new configuration is ready. I'm going to rename it as Wana Crypt Ransomware. So renaming your configuration will let you identify it easily in future so that you can track the status of it. You can export some data, reports periodically. So here is a script all set for you. All you have to do right now is just go down, choose your target. And when I say target, it is always recommended to choose a domain as your target. Because at this point of time, when your system administrator, probably when you are trying to execute a script to computers, you cannot expect all the computers in your enterprise to be readily available in your network. 
So when you deploy this configuration, this script configuration to a domain, anytime a computer is added into this domain in future, assume there are few more new joiners who are going to join your enterprise, your department. In that case, anytime a new computer is added into this domain, these configurations will automatically be enforced on them. So I'm going to choose my local office. And I have an option where I can customize my target. I'm just going to click on this customize option. What I'm going to do here is choose an exclusion. Why do I do this? Because the very beginning I explained it to you. Using custom scripts will work effectively for computers running Windows Vista and later versions. So what about Windows XP? And that is the reason I'm going to choose this exclusion list. I don't find Windows XP here since I have chosen domain. So here is a quick list of the ready-made options available. I'm going to choose operating systems. So excluding a specific operating system is all that easy. I'm going to choose Windows XP, and we are all set. It's chosen for the complete local office, and I'm excluding computers which are running on Windows XP. I'm just going to scroll down. And here you have the option to deploy this immediately. So when I say deploy immediately, this configuration is deployed immediately to the computers across your network. And here is the status. The moment the configuration is deployed, you can find the summary. You can find the configuration's details, its execution status, so to how many computers it's been initiated, what is the last contact time when the computer has reached or contacted the, contacted the central server? And here is a dashboard, a quick dashboard, which can give you a better understanding on how many configurations are yet to be applied, how many configurations have succeeded, and how many are in progress. So after a while, you can find the data being posted here. This can give you a complete overview of the functioning. So we are all set, computers running on Windows Vista and later versions. Right now, the ports, the vulnerable ports will be blocked. Now, let's head back to computers running on Windows XP. What do we do now? I'm going to create a different configuration, and this configuration is going to be a firewall configuration. Again, it's right on top. I'm going to click the second button, configurations. This is the complete view. You can find a list of configurations that we provide you, the Stop Central offers you. You have configurations for Mac and Linux. We are going to choose firewall configuration. And again, this configuration is going to be exclusively for computers. It's a computer-based configuration. So we are all set. I'm going to rename this configuration as WannaCry or WannaCrypt. And what am I supposed to do here? I'm going to choose Windows XP as the operating system. And under Actions, Action on Ports, I'm going to choose Block. Here is a list of ports. And this is the port I'm going to choose. Right now, it's UDP 138. I feel this is the port that, that is vulnerable. I'm simply going to choose it. Come down to the target. I'm going to choose a domain or the entire local office so that I'm not going to miss out on any specific computers. And I'm going to deploy them immediately. So now. The first stage is completed. All I could see is the vulnerable ports are blocked. These ports are blocked on computers which are running on Windows XP as well as on computers which are running Windows Vista and later versions. So heading back to the slide, what are we supposed to do here? We have blocked the ports for Windows XP and Windows Vista. The second thing that we were discussing about is deploying patches. Here we go, back to the product screen. Here is our patch management module. I'm just going to click on patch management module. So I'm just going to take you back to the presentation for a quick view on what we do and how we do this. When I say deploying the patches, there are certain things that need to be taken care of. The first thing that I would recommend you to do is to synchronize the patch vulnerability database. The second thing that you'll have to do is to scan your computers and identify the computers which misses the vulnerable or, say, the critical patches. The subsequent thing is going to be the patch deployment process. And finally, 
you can head out with your report generation process. Let's go back to the product screen to add more clarity to this process. So here is our patch management module. I'm simply going to scroll down, 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 and here it is. Update vulnerability database. So clicking on this button will synchronize the latest patch data, which is released from Desktop Central's online patch repository. So Desktop Central synchronizes. Desktop Central publishes the patches which are released every single day. We have a test lab. So a patch crawler team works on the patches. They test it into a test environment. And once they are good to go, they are published using the online patch database. And this data is synchronized to every desktop central server in different enterprise. So this happens once in every 24 hours. However, in terms of emergency, in terms of any urgent need, you can go ahead and click Update Now option to synchronize the data manually. So once it is done, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to show you how to, have to find the computers which miss the critical patches. So we are going to click on Scan Systems. This view allows you to scan the computers manually. Though Desktop Central has a process of automating your patch deployment, which can take over your regular routine of scanning computers and patching them periodically. At times of need, you can also go back, choose the computers that you wanted to scan, and deploy the patches manually. So we are going to select the computers. I can just select them all and invoke a scan. By just selecting a computer here and initiating a scan, this computer will be scanned, and the missing patches would be identified. And I would also like to specify this icon on the color representation. When this computer is represented in green color, it means the computer is live and available in the network. This computer has contacted the server a few minutes ago. So if the computer is in red, it refers to the computer is not available at the moment. OK? So once you scan your computers, you will get the data on how many computers how many computers were scanned successfully, the success rate, and the failure rate. OK? And now I'm going to show you how to identify the missing patches. I'm going to click on All Patches View. You have an option where you can search for the patch based on your patch ID, KB number, or description. So we click on Missing Patches. And I'm going to help you figure out the computers where WannaCry patch is missing. So I'm going to click on Search. Since I'm not familiar with the KB number, I'm just going to type Wanna Cry or Wanna Crypt in the patch description field. And here is an option to go ahead and search it. Here it is. It is all this simple. A click of a button away, sitting at your disk, you have the complete data of the computers which are yet to be patched. These are the patches which need to be deployed. And here is a view, missing systems. All I could identify is just one computer. Probably this is the only computer which misses the patches. I'm clicking on that particular mission to identify the details. OK, it is a Vista computer. So all I have to do right now is just to go back and deploy this particular patch to this particular computer. So I've chosen the patch. I'm going to click on Install Patch option. Let's see how it works. So a patch configuration is ready to go. I'm going to rename this configuration again just to ensure that simplifies my task in future. It's renamed as WannaCrypt or WannaCry. And all I'm going to do right now is just to go ahead and deploy the patch immediately. However, there is one thing that I would like to specify. Before I deploy a patch, you'll have to look into the deployment policy that you have chosen. So, what is a deployment policy in the first place? Deployment policy, let me show you how it works. I'm just going to click on this so that you can have a better understanding. I'm going to create a policy. So as I said, what is a deployment policy? Deployment policy is an option which allows you to customize your deployment. You can choose when 
the patch needs to be deployed. Probably it should be deployed during non-business hours. It should be deployed during a specific time interval during weekends or be it only the first weekend. You can customize the deployment completely. You can also go ahead and choose if the computer needs to be rebooted or you need to exclude servers from reboot. So you have all the options that you can configure here. The most vital part here is configuring this window. This deployment window should be left open. Why do we do this again? I said, these are critical patches, and we never wanted to delay the deployment of these patches. Assume I'm going to provide or specify a particular time window, might be like a weekend. I'm sure this patch will be deployed only during the weekend. So we do not want this delay. In order to eliminate this delay, we are going to open the window as 24 hours, as specified here. We're going to choose the appropriate deployment window. Once the deployment window is defined, once the deployment policy is selected, you can go back to your previous view. I've chosen a deployment policy here, and it's all set to go. I'm going to choose deploy immediately. So when I say deploy immediately, the computers will contact the central server during every once in every 90 minutes. And of course, when I initiate this process, your wait time is not even going to be 90 minutes. This process will be initiated immediately. It will be initiated instantly. So your patches are being deployed to the vulnerable computers. You can see that the patches have been downloaded, and it's ready in draft status. So shortly, this patch will be deployed to the respective computer. Now heading back to our screen. What did we do now? We have identified the computer where the missing patches, identified the computers where the missing patches needs to be deployed, and right now we have deployed the patches too. The final stage is just generating a report for your management. I'm taking you back to the product screen. You can go back to all patches view. Here it is installed patches, and I'm going to choose Wanna cry again by searching from here. It is wanna cry or wanna crypt. Yeah, here it is. So all these patches are installed. All you can do is just on the right corner you've got an option to export this data. You can export this data and send it across to your management so that everyone in your enterprise would feel rest assured that your computers are safe. And of course that is the first part in business. Now we are moving back to the presentation. Your report is ready. So what next? Are we done? Are we done with the presentation? Are we done with the process? Does it all end here? I don't think so. This time it was Windows. Yes. But next time, any time, it could be Apple, Windows, third party, or Linux. So what do we do now? There is another shocking news probably most of you should be aware of. Shadow brokers. Who are they? They are the ones who actually threw a lot of light on these vulnerabilities. They are the ones who actually exploited and you know threw a lot of light on these vulnerabilities, and that is where everything began. They have promised to come back with a lot more such attacks in the near future. Though this is alarming, this actually makes us think. So what do we do right now? Securing against vulnerabilities, that is all the more complex. You are left blindfolded into a maze, and you'll have to find your way out. I'm sure this is not all that easy. That too, when you have thousands of computers in your network running on different operating systems and thousands of applications passing them all every time, this is never going to be easy unless or until you have a complete patch management software. So this is never an end. This is just the beginning. What I would personally suggest is this is just the beginning, and it is time for us to look back and start keeping our computers up to date, be it in terms of updating the patches or migrating to the latest operating systems. This is high time that we take these measures critically. So. Management offers you three different solutions. The first one is going to be Desktop Central, as I discussed earlier. This is an integrated solution which helps you to manage your desktops, mobile devices from a single console, 
and next is going to be patch manager plus patch manager plus is an exclusive tool to automate your complete patch management needs complete patch management needs which includes all the operating systems all the three major operating systems third party patches starting from testing the patches automatically to deploying them to your network generating reports everything end to end and of course we have desktop central for service providers too so this is all for the day and before we conclude since we are running out of time i'm going to pick the top 3 questions that were asked during this presentation here we go the first one what should i do to prevent these attacks in future minutes ago i i stated the same you know i quoted the same sentence i stated the same sentence this is never the end this is just the beginning so your patch management need or your prevention doesn't stop here all you need to do is to ensure that you keep updating all your computers periodically that is the first thing that needs to be taken care of and number 2 what i would suggest you to do is to apply a configuration which can help you to block the vulnerable ports to patch the computers and this these configurations should be applied for a domain so whenever you apply a configuration to a domain you can see to it that any computer that joins the domain in future are protected too okay this is the first thing first question moving on to the second how do i protect computers which are not in the network of course i had it answered a while ago so we we'll have to ensure that all the computers are patched periodically and keep monitoring the computers you it's it's always recommended to use an automated patch deployment task if you are existing user of desktop central or if you are trying desktop central for the first time i would definitely recommend you to create an apd task we we call it as an apd task automated patch deployment task this automated patch deployment task takes care of everything it is just at one time you are going to create a task and week on week or say every fortnight or every month it does everything for you it scans the computers periodically patches them all you know and sends you report every time there is a change in the patch status so this can take all the pain and pressure out of you you can sit back and relax and monitor the health status of your computers so what happened to the ports that were blocked this is a this is a nice question uh, the intention of blocking the ports was just for an intermediate time interval to be more precise we requested you to block certain ports okay those ports were blocked only with the intention that these ports are highly vulnerable at the moment you can definitely use this top central create another configuration or probably go back and edit the configuration and apply it back to all the computers which means any time you feel that your network is safe i don't i don't say that you'll have to do it immediately once you patch it because few computers are might be you know awaiting a patch to be deployed being that the case you can hold back once you feel that your network is safe you are free from your worries you can go back and unblock those ports so we are at the end of this presentation i should really thank every one of you for your time at the end of this presentation there'll be a survey you can rate us on a scale of 1 to 5 where 5 being the best thank you again for your wonderful time wish you all good luck and good day to bye bye